Good morning and happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I'm Adam Block, Chair of the Needham Planning Board and Finding Quorum. I call this meeting to order. Uh, this meeting of the Planning Board is being conducted in a uh, um, hybrid manner with current state regulations and is being recorded. All supporting materials for this meeting, including the agenda, are available on the town's website at needhamma.gov. Our uh, first order of business um, before us is a discussion uh, to resolve the articles that we have for May Town Meeting. Uh, do we take the easiest one first? Does anybody have um, any comments or questions for uh, uh, about the uh, corrective zoning measures? Paul, no, Jean. No, I guess no. Not Ready? Okay. No. Okay. So the articles one. That would be articles one and four. I think it was yeah, Article I Three. Was uh, article, uh, article Three. Oh, yeah, correct. Yeah. I mean, I don't. Think Lee, is that, that's correct, right? I article don't. Three. Because uh, that to... was not included in our packet. <clears throat> Oh, it, it was included. It should have been included in your packet. The technical changes. Article, article, but that, the yeah, other article. one. What are you looking the for? The other one is the, the corrective it's zoning. Measure. It's Article Three. Great. I okay. have it here. Right. Okay. Good. So, I. Uh, so we have no comments. So we're resolved. Do we? Should we take an individual vote on each of the articles? Yes. Okay. So, can I have a motion to approve Article Three as written? I move that we approve Article Three as written and send it to the uh, Warren Committee. For, for well, I, I think I think the motion has to be to recommend to town meeting the approval of Article Three as drafted. Well, I think at this point, aren't we just sending it to the Warren Committee? No, you're no. At, at this point, you are making your recommendation for the warrant on the article and to town meeting. So you're voting your recommendation on the article. So it's already going into the warrant without our asking the Warren Committee to put it in. Yes, it's we've already, already we've already done that. We did that at the first stage when we held a hearing. It's, it's already on the warrant. Um, so you're making your recommendation to town meeting on the article we've itself. We've got we've got other warrant articles here that are totally different than what what has been sent to the warrant committee because we've totally redrafted. Yes. Um, and the, and the, and the yes, and so you, you, you're you recommending the article in the form that it's in currently to town meeting. And these, but these are the forms that are going to be printed in the, in the, um, warrant. in, the, in the warrant. So in the warrant, it's going to be printed as you're voting it today. And without our making a motion and voting to send it to the warrant in this form. That's correct. I'm, gonna... oh. I'm sorry, I cut you off, Lee. Yes. I think we have I think I think we have to vote to adopt this and ask the warrant committee to publish it in the warrant as we're as we're presenting it today. Otherwise, they've got what we sent them two weeks ago or a month ago. And make a recommendation. And then we have a separate vote on the recommendation. You can do it that way. You can do it that way. If, if you feel more comfortable doing it that way, it's fine. I move that we send Article 3, Amend Zoning Bylaw, Corrective Zoning Amendments, as drafted, to the Warren Committee for inclusion in the May uh, meeting, warrant, and that um, we vote to um, recommend to town meeting that they adopt it as drafted. Second. We have a motion by Paul Alper. We have a second by Natasha Spada. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, I'll come to the vote. Uh, Paul Alper. Aye. Artie Crocker. Aye. Natasha Spada. Aye. Jean McKnight. Aye. The chair votes aye. We've disposed of uh, Article 3. Um, let's take up the three car garage. Uh, as to the um, change itself, does anyone have any comments or questions? Okay. The, the final, the final wording that was distributed. Yes. Um, and this is for article one regarding three car garages. 
Um, Lee, I have a separate note, which I'll send to you about the explanation, but it's. Yeah. Sure. So I move that um, uh, we send Article 1, Amend Zoning Bylaw Accessory 3 Car Garage Use and Single Family Red Residence B, General Residence Business and Industrial Districts to the Warrant Committee for inclusion in the annual town meeting warrant, and that we recommend town meeting that it be adopted. I have a motion by Paul Alpert, a second by. Second. By Artie Crocker. Uh, any discussion? Harry Nano will come to the vote. Paul Albert. Aye. Artie Crocker. Aye. Nisha, Natasha Espada. Aye. Uh, Gene McKnight. Aye. Uh, and the chair votes uh, aye. We dispose of Article 1. Thank you. And then I just realized that if we're all physically present, we don't have to do a roll call vote. Uh, <coughs> let us move now to Article 4. Article four is to amend the zoning bylaw single residence B and general residence side setback. And uh, there has been some um, back and forth with Lee with some additional corrective language. Dave, have you seen, you must have seen the, the, late, yeah. the absolute latest, right? Yeah, so like we said before, it now kind of says it twice in the bylaw that after after 32 feet, it has to have a two foot jog, regardless of how far away from the property line it was. And that was a problem the way it was originally drafted, because if they weren't at the 14 feet, they felt that they didn't have to abide by the bylaw. So, so if they were at 16 feet, they could have the 50 feet, feet of side. Right. Right. Yeah, 12 or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. They could be, that's yeah. right. So this, this clears that up, and I think it says it twice in there, which is good. So yep. it should be fine. Thank you for that language change. I drafted some of that. Yes. And then um, for the record, this is uh, Dave Roger, building commissioner. Uh, so uh, does anyone else have any comments? Gene, thanks for your uh, suggested additional revision. I'm sorry for swinging your neck. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm very happy with it the way it is now. Um, Would you be more comfortable to sit over here? I, no, I'm doing fine. Okay. I'd rather sit here with everybody. I would have a chair, Gene. Seriously, just swivel the chair or something like that. Or, or move the chair or something. As long as I can hold straight, I can move my body. All right, go ahead. <laughs> she, she get the chair. There you go. Swing the chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is only regarding St. Patrick's Day. It's a festive, festive political it's, moment. It's a yay and nay. So that's all we do. All we do. Yeah. So uh, we don't have any other comments, uh, do we, on Article 4 then? Uh, so uh, 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 seeing no other comments, um, would someone like to make a motion? Yes, so I do that we <laughs> send Article 4 on the zoning bylaw, um, single residence being general residence side setback as presently drafted and sent to us yesterday um, to the warrant committee for inclusion in the in the annual town meeting warrant and that we recommend the town meeting <laughs> that it be adopted. We have a motion by Paul Alpert, a second by second by Natasha Spada. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, all opposed? Nay. I, I, don't, I don't need to say <laughs> okay, nay. I don't need the to chair say votes nay. 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 Uh, uh, the uh, uh, motion is unanimously uh, approved. Uh, Article 4 is uh, passed and moving on to town uh, meeting as written. Thank you all very much. Now comes finally Article 2. <laughs> With respect to uh, amending the zoning bylaw for accessory dwelling units, the um, most recent suggested changes uh, are highlighted in red as Leah sent it out. In particular, I'll call out a few policy items for us just to be sure this is what we are in fact resolving. Uh, under article, under uh, subsection uh, uh, 2B, we're now allowing for an adult employed by an owner to provide childcare to one or more of the owner's family members, which is to say, if you have a child caregiver, which was excluded previously, it's now 
um, <coughs> included. Uh, does anyone have any comments about that? Any opposition? Excellent. Then um, with respect to the ability to lease it out, uh, the ADU, um, we were referring to, or the, or the primary uh, dwelling unit, we initially had a minimum term of um, 12 months, but we since resolved to reduce it to six months. Uh, this is um, <coughs> paragraph 3E. Does anyone have any comments about that? No, I think it makes perfect sense because of the fact that right now in town, there are people that can rent out rooms. They rent out rooms when they can or can't, but they rent out rooms all the time in town. And they, whether it be at will or some type of lease or something, they're, they're doing something. So this is a, just a continuation of that inside the main dwelling. So right. That makes perfect sense. I mean, we right. were just trying to avoid um, Airbnbs <laughs> exactly. and things like that, yeah. but I think six months is long enough. Yeah, I think so. I Lee, uh, in 6F, I noticed uh, there was, you added an addition lang additional language about uh, the dis proper disposal of stormwater. I don't recall seeing that in previous versions, but it was no, probably good. That wasn't in the version that uh, in the initial that we had in front of the um, uh, hearing. Yeah. Because well, that was something that I pointed out to Lee. Okay, good. Uh, okay. Before it went to the select. I didn't. I didn't focus on it, and uh, suddenly now I did. Um, I one. Uh, uh, so that's with respect to six F. With regard to six C, where we state that um, the total occupancy is limited to uh, uh, five persons who are not family of the owner, should we set out a limit for the ADU as a one bedroom unit, how many, what the occupancy capacity should be? Well, if, it's, if it's one bedroom, maybe how many people- It's self-limited. It? It, it, Unless you're a college it's student. Well, that's what I would make. Then you put bunk beds. Right. And then yeah. you know you have bunk beds or you, and you can get a thousand dollars a bed and $4,000 a mm -hmm. unit as which is what you a must one bedroom is. I, I, and, <laughs> and, I don't think you are. Okay. There are practical elements to 900 square that are self limited. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. I mean, we, we may get some pushback at town meeting related to that part of it. Five individuals and related, because then you could have one owner in the main and about four people in the ADU or something like that. So, well, it's actually, I think you can, it's more than that, right? Well, if there's five hundred. Up to five hundred. You can have you can have five people living in the house, yeah, and then an addition of five, five people, people living I'm sorry, in the ADU. I'm sorry, that's where that's where you know. Uh, right? No, no, it's that, five total. I mean, it, depends, it depends on whether they're family members. We're saying right. there's limited five non-family members right. yeah. in so, the yeah. entire yes. property. So the five so non-family members could so be in the ADU. Five family members of the primary dwelling. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna have five non-related. Individuals <clears throat> in the ADU. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If they can squeeze in, right. Mm -hmm. So that's wow. why. But Dave, to Dave's the point, it's a self limiting. <laughs> because it says know, occupancy of the unit. It doesn't say occupancy of the entire lot. I don't really why, know why it has to say five, honestly, because even in the house, it's, it's going to be one bedroom dedicated to that unit. Yes. So, that's right. Like, you know, certainly could be less than five. Um, I, I think the reason we use five is elsewhere in our bylaw, we have a limitation on five unrelated persons. Is that as a result of a, of a, of a health standard or ordinance? Um, I, 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 it might just be that oh, no. we, we, we just don't want a um, bunch of unrelated list. people living together, each one of each, presumably being an adult and having their own car. Uh, I don't know exactly the reason, but we're matching that. Yeah. We're saying right. this isn't any different from any other single family home, but but you can't have more than 500 living people living here. I think this is fairly common with other municipalities to yeah. limit, to avoid like rooming houses. Well, yeah. yes. it, it, kind of it does say provided that the occupancy of the principal dwelling unit and the ADU mm -hmm. combined yeah. shall be limited to five persons who are not family of the owner. So it's five people in addition to the family of the owner. Correct. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. That's correct. That's that's the way it's drafted. Well, again, we keep keep in mind if the if the detached structure ADU goes to town meeting, 
you know, the detached structure, you go to the time reading and the formative, that means a detached structure could have 500 related people living in it. But you can also have it attached, five people living in it. But that's not the point. I'm talking about the detached right now. The detached could be 500 related people living in the unit. The, yeah. According to this. Yes. Yeah, correct. That's yeah, what this is saying. Yeah. yeah but it's, it's, it's saying. not, this is not, this is for both an attached and a detached. Correct. But I'm talking about detached right now. And this, sure. this applies to the whole building. Correct. Uh, ADU and principal dwelling unit combined. Right. So if if the owner's unit has unrelated people living that area, <laughs> right, then that means the ADU can have fewer unrelated yes. people because there's five the five with the owner, the the owner's par partner, you might say, or right. The, Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not okay. We're, I mean, we're talking about the fact that you know, again, if it goes, if it's voted in affirmative, as far as sometimes people don't always catch the, the nuances here, and that is the reality is it could be five unrelated people. Not that it's going to like, legally we can, but we we're having the discussion that you've got nine hundred square feet and one bedroom. Yeah. Okay. I'm stumped, but I understand that. But the you nuances. Know, as a practical I think, matter. I understand it's that. going to be very difficult for five college students. To squeeze into that unit. I, I, and as I, I said before, kiddingly, and I'm still kidding. We're I not agree. killing each other. I no, I mean I, I do not disagree with that 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 psychological so. scenario. <laughs> but the fact but the fact well, is that the fact is that this is says that they can't. But remember also people that um have temporary like the like the flight attendants in that in that unit, right? right. Like there were five people that were rotating in and out. But and, no more. No more than five. No, we've got. I just want to make sure no, that we're all we've set. Got, we've got a limit in in here that if you're renting out a unit, the only people who can live in the unit are the lessee and the lessee's family. Now, who's going to be the lessee on, on a lease for rotating flight attendants? Yeah, I think you're probably going to get college students more than flight attendants, but yes. I'm just I'm just throwing it yeah. out there. The five college students who can't afford to go <laughs> might live there. So if we're that's, okay, that's, with that, we're okay fine. with that. That's I just fine. want to make sure that I'm like calling it up. lined up with two or three college students. And that's that's the only really problem with that is, is is parking because if five college students have five vehicles. And they're trying right. to talk that on residential property with the owner of the vehicle as well. That's where we get the complaints because okay. the cars are now parked on the street, they're parked on the lawn, which is why they're in violence. With, and we have well, they're in violation if they're parked on the lawn. No, that's correct. We do, and we that's right. We do have a provision in here that requires all parking needs to be accommodated on site, off street parking. Correct. But to Artie's point, you're saying that. If I park my car in the front lawn, people are getting complaints or people are complaining to you about that? Yeah, I mean, I had a house that was rented to to own students. Yes. And there was about six or seven cars on my, on my driveway, on the lawn and everything. And the neighbor complained about it. I, I called the owner of the property and said, listen, that's a single family house. Right. You cannot rent it to non-family members. You want to rent the house to a family? You have, I have no issues with that. But you can't rent it to seven college kids. They're not family. They're not related together. It's very weak, but it worked. You got them out of there and rented it to a family. But that was the complaint I was getting. Right. Aside from, you know, they're out on the back porch, you know, having a good time at night and get the grill going and, you know, doing what college kids do. But it was mostly the parking issues. It was on a small cul-de-sac and there was a lot of guys there. So I raised this because I think as I already said, it will come up uh, you know, at town meeting. Um, and so now would be our opportunity if we wanted to limit with respect to the number of people in the ADU. Could we limit the amount of cars rather than the amount of people? Okay, could we say? With the well, maximum of we have a minimum number of cars. We're requiring at least one parking one. space per per unit. No, per uh oh per unit. Right. Per unit. Okay, so the parking then would be related to that. So you could only get one additional car, even if you have five people. Well, okay. We're requiring we're requiring one additional parking space. 
We're not site. setting a limit. But we also do have a provision in here, which is similar to the regular bylaw, says you have to provide for off street parking. Unless we also, Perfect. unless we change it to say something like, you know, on a paved surface or a graveled surface, in other words, and not on a seated lawn or not on a lawn or something. I, I want me yeah. to get that. I mean, I personally think that three is the number. Okay. It's, it's a it's a husband yeah. and wife, and maybe they got a full couch if another right. family member comes and visits them yeah. or something like that. I don't think I think five were actually asking for problems. Okay. Um, so five what people? Five five people in an eighty ward. There would be the assumption yeah. that five people can be in an eighty in a nine hundred square foot. Yeah. ADU. I don't, I'd like to personally see it at three. Like I said, it would be a couple or whatever. And if they had a pull out couch that somebody could stay over five, right. but we don't want, you know, five unrelated people setting up cots all over the inside. Right. Yeah. Anything yeah. Either. So I, I feel comfortable sense. with that. Where do, we, I don't, where do we put that? I think we say where we were talking about it. Uh, C, six C. At six C, where we say five, we limit so three. to three. But it's so probably 60, the, the size of the ADU can be limited to 900 square feet of living space. C, 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 C. C, okay. Occ occupancy of the unit that is not owner occupied shall be limited to a member or members of the owner's family or caregiver and such caregiver's family. Let's see, provide occupancy of the principal. Provided that occupancy of the principal dwelling and the ADU combined shall be limited to five persons and then, comma, and the occupancy of the ADU shall shall be limited to three persons. Uh, why don't we just say and the ADU combined to, yeah should be limited to. So we keep we keep the five non-related people maximum for the entire property. Don't take that out just as occupants and, and the and, but, the but, occupancy of the ADU well, shall be limited to three persons. I'm okay, okay with that because what that says is that if you have caretakers for someone that's un that are unrelated in the main house, you can still have additional people on the right. on the lot. Okay. And it says, yeah, for a caregiver and such caregivers then. Yeah. So Dave, Dave, right now, so I mean, technically, right now in someone's house, they're living there. They can have people living with them that are unrelated. unrelated. And what restrictions do can we even impose on that? It's their house. They can well, have. We already have a bylaw that says how many we people. We have a general bylaw yeah. that Jane pointed yeah. out yeah. that says you can only have five unrelated but, people. Right? Correct. So uh, I would like to make a, uh, yeah. a correction on that. Um, it actually says this um, in the definition of family, and it, it allows or um, not more than three unrelated individuals per dwelling unit living as a single housekeeping unit. Then it has, says the Board of Appeals may issue a special permit for up to two additional individuals. Okay. So, so, I think you're, it's five by allowed, so it's only five by special permit, otherwise it's three. So does that mean that we have to make this change? Or if that's only as it refers to the definition of family? Yes. That doesn't refer to the definition of occupancy. I think you should change it here for what Paul recommended. Well, I, I think it's good to have something for clarity in, in right. not just but, uh, but, copy. But also it, technically. Because this would allow six for each dwelling unit. It, I think that we'd get in trouble if we copy this. Right. Okay. Are you glad? Um on the if the change, I understand why you're saying that, Paul. Um, but if we're but if we're if we're combining the main household with the ADU as far as total, then it's then it sounds like um um Getting into a crowd, we're getting into a little issue there because now we're saying is we're kind of I think we're kind of in a, it's like okay into three into the ADU, but if we're then that but if then we're saying five maximum yeah. unrelated people total between the two right because they can live in the main house no I understand that but then we're saying if there's three unrelated in the ADU that means only two can be with only two can be in the main house isn't that what we're saying just now what will probably happen in that situation if you've got a caregiver who has a larger family is is that the owner is going to move into the ADU and the caregiver, and the caregiver and having a larger family, yeah. which we're allowing up to five unrelated unrelated people can live in the main house. I, I've I, got no problem with that. No, and I understand that scenario type of thing. I guess what I'm saying is do we do we have to talk about the main dwelling in this part of it? What do we have to do as opposed to just saying in the no, end? No, because we're in, saying in we're, we're allowing that. No, I'm, I'm saying, but 
why do we have to talk about the combination of the main dwelling since that's covered? That's already covered the main dwelling. Why are we just talking about the ADU can have no just maximum, the unit? Yeah, no maximum, no more than three hundred other people. Why do we have to combine it with the total of the main house when that already has an, an its individual bylaw taken care of? It? So therefore, in the primary house, you can still have the caregiver and family. Do think, Dave, do you think that we have to reference our definition in section one? Uh, or That's only a definition. Okay, I'm just. Well, it's a definition of family, but it expounds on it and says that you cannot have more than three uh, unrelated people living at the property or up to five with a special mm -hmm. permit. For a dwelling unit. For a dwelling unit. Now we've got two dwelling units on this property. Well, if you had a two family, we've got two dwelling units. Right. We're right. talking standard two units already. No, I think right you're right. We need to keep it this way. <laughs> yeah, sure that's a dwelling unit. You have two. Yeah. Two dwelling right. units <laughs> on the property, so that would that that would increase to six. Yeah, two to fourteen. Yeah. So we're going to limit, as already says, like just no. the ADU to three. three. In three. addition to the language that we already have, which that says a maximum of. So do you want to restate? Property. Want to restate your wording? <laughs> all that I all that I'm suggesting is that. Um, at in 60. paragraph 6C, mm -hmm. we add at the end, after the word owner at the very end, we put comma. Oh. Uh, and occupancy of the ADU shall be limited to three persons who are not family. And occupancy of the ADU shall be limited. Or we can just say to three persons. To three persons. To three persons. Period. Three people. Three people. Yeah, good. Yeah, that, 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 yeah, that takes away the unrelated aspect of it. We're simply yeah. saying you're you're already you support that. Well, for I mean, not exactly what I had in mind. If we're, we're still keeping the rest of it in there, correct? We're just mm -hmm. adding the yeah, and that takes away from what I was thinking. Um, is it still saying five unrelated people total? And that can be that means you can't if you have three unrelated in the AD, you can't have more than two in the main house. And I think that and I don't think we should delve into the main house aspect of it. I think we should leave that alone and just be as this and just talk about the ADU, the maximum the ADU can be more no more That's than three people. Yeah. Uh, and no, except for you're adding it to the end of that. You're not, you know, we're not deleting the five total unrelated. Correct. When I, you know, yeah. So so you're not you're not deleting that. Correct. You're adding the addition, you're adding the additional no matter when three in the ADU. But again, what I'm saying is that means that no more than if there's three unrelated in the ADU, that means there could be no more than two unrelated in the main house. Yeah, but why are we getting into the main house? It doesn't make sense to me. Let's say because let's how you can have five in the main house. You can rent out the main house and so the owner living in the ADU and but, we're allowing five people, but, five, five people who are unrelated to the owner mm -hmm. to be living in the main house. I've got no problem with that. No, I am I have no problem with that either. But I thought that this says this says now says that total between the two, no more than five yep. in comma, but also no more than three in the ADU. No more than five people unrelated to the owner. Total. Total. Correct. Okay. You can yes, have sir. 10 people who are related to the owner. Correct. Okay. I understand that. But that's you not a family but, with, with, you know, with the son, the daughter in law, and no, no, seven I, kids. No, I get that. No, I, I appreciate that fact. But right now we're talking about, you know, let's forget, let's forget about the, the ADU for a second. Let's forget about that. In the main house, you could have, you could have, um, you know, I don't know, is it five unrelated people? You could have you could have a certain amount of unrelated people living in the main house. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So why are we changing anything related to the main house? Because this is this this wording changes that. We're not changing anything related to the main house. We're making an addition because we now have two units on the property. I, no, I understand. So, what you so we're adding the provision that says because we've got two units, we're still we're going to have a further limit that says no more than five people who are unrelated to the owner can be on the entire property. The entire property. Good. And so I just want to make sure the definition of family doesn't cover that. It only mm -hmm. covers each dwelling. Okay. Okay. And, and we're limiting how many people can live. Okay. In the so as long as we know we're changing as long as we know we're changing the definition of the main house. As long as we know that because that changes the definition of what can happen in the main house. So yeah, we're clear. That, that's we're clear. fine. That's fine. As long as we know that. And I think from an enforcement uh, 
perspective that this makes sense because mm -hmm. now I can, you know, more people are going to complain about how many people are in that ADU. Yeah. Right. If I go in there and there's six people in there, we got a problem. Yeah. You know, yeah. You're only supposed to have three. I right. appreciate you know, that enforcement yeah. because that's, you know, that's 900 square yeah. feet you're putting all these people in as opposed to a five or six bedroom house. Right. Exactly. Right. You can swallow that right up. And you yeah. Even know. Exactly. Right. Good. And all right. So I got a question. Yeah. I'm going to change the subject a little bit, and I'm glad Dave is here to answer this question. And this is what's in the original Where bylaw, you? but I'm I'm picking it up. In 6H, the so owner of record shall be responsible for oh. submitting an ADU application to the building commission. ADU and the principal dwelling unit, along with a certified site plan, shall also be submitted. Do they really need to have floor plans for the entire house that already has an occupancy permit? Um, the only thing is, is if it's if it's attached to the main house by adding another bedroom, we need to know what bedrooms are in the house because now, right, it's an older house. Hardwired smoke detectors are required to build the whole house now. Mm -hmm. That's building code. For, for subject, so I need right? to know like, how many bedrooms are in there. This is what you have to do for that. Okay. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so you want the floor plans for yeah. the entire house. And the site plan is basically it's going to adjust the, the, plan, yeah. it's going to adjust the driveway. Yeah. Um, no, no. I've got no problem with the site plan. I was just thinking, do they really have to spend the money to have floor plans for the entire thing? You know, they're putting an AD yeah. in, in the basement. Yep. Do they need to have floor plans for the first and second floors for you? And now you're telling me yes because right. you need to look at it. Yeah, we need to address the egresses and all. It's still too many egress to get in and out or an emerged escape window or something. And then, right. you know, okay. if the stairway comes up to the first floor, where does it come out to? Yeah. So it's a lot of these. My question's been answered. Or septic, okay. right? Asked and answered. And answered. A lot yeah. of coverage, too. Yeah. Okay. So that, uh, so that takes us now on page three, uh, article, um, uh, item number 8A, we have um, revised so that there can be no more than one ADU in a lot and no more than one additional accessory building larger than 200 square feet as opposed to 50 square feet. This is new to our ADU bylaw. In other words, in the original, managing. Yes. Thank you very much. And it was 50, right? Okay. Uh, so, well, we okay, didn't have accessory buildings, so all these all these regulations here are new. Yes, exactly. It doesn't well, we have, say- We have decided, to, I think, to revise this particular provision that we had in the original advertised article based upon, I think, Dave's recommendation at the hearing. So Lee, one question for you is that, does that mean that any additional accessory unit, not necessarily an ADU can be 200 square feet? Yes, you could have one additional accessory building of 200 square feet. That's what we have now. Well, it originally, um, the original square footage that we had in this was 50. 50. Was 50. They pointed out that that was an older, uh, under the state building code, accessory buildings so can be 200 square feet. Right. That's the current right. standard. That makes sense. But the policy point is, thanks, Jean. The policy point was we're allowing to have the primary house, a detached ADU, and another detached, like, yeah. garage or a small garage. Small garage. Yeah. yeah. Which I think is reasonable because we're trying to keep the lawn, you know, potty to replace to put your snowblower in a lawnmower. If you convert your garage into an ADU, you still have an ability to put away that stuff. Yeah, and I think bikes and so on. I think food for thought is at some point we need to look at the accessory uh, structure part of the bylaw. Yes, and maybe limit the amount of accessory structure, if, even if it isn't an ADU. Right. Um, so something to think about. Right. Have to be done right now. But yeah. Uh, Lee, Lee, I'd like you to flag that or Alex flag that as part of our ongoing list. Yes, it's already on the list. We added it. Good. Thank you very much. So does anyone have any comments or opposition to that? All right. Everyone's in support. All right. You're good. Well, that, that particular yes. change. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, so now comes um, uh, uh, 8D. And then we have a number of, we have a couple of different alternatives. Any accessory building used as an ADU must comply with all current requirements of uh, section four, 
which are the dimensional regulations. Dimensional regulations are the bylaw applicable to a principal building in the district in which the property is located. And by, by doing that, we're allowing for uh, the five foot setback. Is that right? No, in the, first that, one, no. in the first one, it has to be moved back to 14 feet. By the 14 feet, the other one or, is- or 12, 12 or 14, depending on the lot. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yep, good. And then- uh, And the alternative would allow it to five feet. That's right, or the second or. So I, I recommend the five feet. And this was obviously a policy question that we debated at some length. My, my belief, having listened to what Dave was talking about after Oscar spent all those hours preparing those uh, drawings, was that, um, was that uh, there are substantial limiting factors for a detached ADU. We have the building code that Dave identified. We also have the dimensional regulations, which uh, uh, the dimensional regulations. And in addition to that, the economics. If you're spending $150,000 to develop, you know, to devise a, uh, to, uh, to build an ADU, and it could be even a little more than that, uh, um, and you're getting at most $3,000, you know, it's going to take a bunch of years. You may actually sell the house before you recover the amount. So it may not be in the economic interest to actually do that. So I think there are substantial limiting factors at play. Yet, for the person that needs it, it makes sense to allow them to be able to do that. And I, I think that's part of the public good that we're trying to provide. And I think that's a worthy goal, and that's why I support that. Support the or. I support. The second. Yeah. In yes. fact, yes. yes. In fact, when I've looked at ADUs, you know, in uh, you know, in Toronto, <laughs> uh, they have laneway houses which are at the zero setback, and the question, of course, is the impact, and. The impacts haven't been seen to be adverse. So, in a scenario where we might even be uh, uh, in a non conforming structure on a lot that is either conforming or non conforming, where you may, instead of being five feet, you might be three feet, to the extent, like Dave mentioned, you're going to have to. You know, there's a lot of building code improvements that you're going to have to do on that wall that's set within this, uh, further into the setback. But I think the rest of the structure, if it was expanded out on the other way, in a lot that was otherwise uh, confining, I think it creates that access for that homeowner with very limited, uh, with very limited negative impact. And because it's a detached structure, through the special permit process with the ZBA, like John Schneider identified, there's an opportunity for a public process for neighbors to be able to redress any concerns they have and for the ZBA to determine if there's any detrimental impact to the value of the properties of the neighbors. And I think that's the best of all worlds. We're talking, we're, you know, we're not talking about, uh, you know, a bunch of these units like you'd have in a large municipality. We're talking about a couple of units. And in the vast majority of circumstances, this may not be a solution. But for the ones that need it the most, why would we want to deny that opportunity? I mean, that is part of the underlying principles that Natasha and Jean have been working on with the housing plan for over a year that we all supported. Yeah, who's next, Mr. Chair? <laughs> I, I, I'm going to give. something to say? I'd love to hear what you have. I'm, I'm going to give this one to Jean. All right. Um, I read again uh, my notes and the comments that were made at our hearing, and there were 14 comments in favor of the uh, of what we were proposing, 
Um, and you know, it was, <laughs> was five feet, feet or fourteen feet at right. the excess at the accessory. The pay the proposing was that the, the accessory uh, building. Um, I mean that uh, that you can have it five feet. In fact, okay. some of the comments directly said, and, and I don't see why we wouldn't have the five feet. Um, and there were five comments against. Uh, not against the concept of, of accessory dwelling units, but against the idea that there would be, um, they could be as close as five feet. So there were, that's what, 14 in favor of mm. the, essentially of the or proposition here, and five against, and two of the other speakers were, were simply asking questions for clarity. So I think, you know, as far as any pushback, um, I think I interpret the meeting and, and the hearing to be generally in favor of what we of what we are proposing here in the four section, um, and I'm I'm in favor of having it. Paul, Natasha, you have some some thoughts. I, I'm in favor of the or. I feel as as Adam mentioned um, that it that it's more equitable um, for everyone. I think that. You, if, if, if we don't do this, you're basically like castigating the people that don't have a larger lot. Well said. What's the point of trying to create, uh, uh, of trying to diversify our housing stock? Why are we just saying we support affordable housing, giving lip service to it, but denying the actual ability to do it? So now I'm ready to get my thoughts. Paul, please. We have to recognize <laughs> that we are changing the original purpose yes. of having ADUs. Our original purpose of having ADUs a few years ago was to allow elderly and disabled people to be able to remain in their homes in need. And now expanding that to basically use ADUs to increase our housing. I think there's anything wrong with that. I'm, I'm just pointing out that, yes. that that's what we do. Yes. We are creating, some, some people are arguing we're turning single family zoning into two family zoning yes. by allowing ADUs all over town. Mm -hmm. My original thought, which actually is a provision in what you drafted for the housing, but we got away from it, was to be able to have Attached ADU in single residence A and in rural and conservation residence because those were those were larger lots. I did not originally support detached ADUs on a 10,000 square foot lot in single residence. We are now allowing detached ADUs all over town. And understand the arguments. I still have a problem being a next door neighbor, having residents five feet away from my property line, especially where it's a 10,000 square foot lot and my and my house is gonna be, you know, 14. The argument that was made by Stephen Frail mm -hmm. was that he's already using is detached building that's only five feet from the property line as a fitness center, basically. And I thought about that. That's great. He's not using the fitness center at three o'clock in the morning. But if you had a family living in that unit and we're allowing rentals, and the rentals are not limited to elderly and disabled people. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stephen yeah. and Heidi Frail can build an ADU and rent that unit. Yes. Okay. Right. That's what we're allowing. We're adding to the housing stock. It's no longer just for, as I said, to allow people who couldn't otherwise stay in need and stay in need. I think town meeting needs to know that. Yes, I, agree. I still have a problem with having three college students <laughs> who might be partying until two, three o'clock in the morning being five feet from the property line in a single residence being unit. Yep. I think that we are imposing um, Problems for the next door neighbors. And that's why I was in favor of 
So I'd like to the, speak the, to that. I'm I gonna, think, no, I think, no, no, I, no, I, no, I think, chair, no, 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 no
I mean, I, I, people know how I feel about large size houses on, pro, on lots. They're, they get ridiculous in size. In some, in certain, in many cases, they can be more uh, more obtrusive than um, than ADU, and, you know, a separate ADU. And I get that. And I, and I, it would be nice to have some way to limit that. But this is this is does not have the vetting. It is not the way to do that. To to, de to eliminate that possibility of a house way too big. Are, you, are you, Is this all going? This is all going to say. This is all going to the direction. I do, I, I, do like not approve the, I do not approve the detached structures because they have not been vetted. Okay. It changes the whole thing. I, I just want to make sure we understand so, what, what, what the position is. It is I, comments. I, I'm just going to ask Artie a clarifying question. Okay. Right sure I can. So Artie, to your point, you just, Jean just asked you that whether you would support for the, um, the D, which uh, to the principal, building setback, which would be 12 or 14 feet. But as just before you got up, you actually said, that's why you don't support, I think, detached structures. Yeah, so that's where I was gonna go. I just wanna ask, I just wanna ask already a question. Regardless of, of the setback, mm -hmm. do you support a detached no, idea? No, okay. I do not support okay. detached structures. So it's because not the setback. Me has it not been vetted for the time. Yeah, I have gotten calls. I've spoken to people yep. um, who are opposed mm -hmm. to detached ADUs. I am fully expecting that on the floor of town, mm -hmm. if if we send the warrant article with detached ADUs, I am fully expecting that there was going to be a motion on the floor of town meeting to remove all the language about mm -hmm. having detached ADUs. It's going to be a lively discussion. Yeah. Um, I agree. Can One I, of the people who was opposed to detach ADUs happens to be watching on Zoom, and I just got a text from that person saying, I agree with our. So they're, they're, yep. they're town meeting members. Um, <clears throat> we're in a fascinating scenario now because they've changed the law. So um we we don't have we don't have a two-thirds vote required right uh, and, and i and i contacted chrissy to make sure that um this is going to be a majority vote because it's housing oh geez this yes. is going to be a majority yeah. 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 i didn't i i, I kind of heard i kind of heard it so what we're going to have that. is we're going to have a debate on the floor of town meeting about detached adus mm -hmm. whether it passes or not will be by majority vote which is what we <laughs> have for amendments to the and then whatever winds up passing there whether it's with detached or without detached it can pass with a majority vote. So it's going to be an interesting situation. Natasha? Um, so I have a quick question. Right now it's saying that any detached is by right. Yes. No, 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 no. Yes. Any detached by special permit. It's by special permit. Okay, I just wanted to confirm right. that because it's I, in the main house, it's by right. Because I, I want yes. people to understand that, that it's not like it's by right. Special, yeah. For, detached, it, right? for a detach, it's a special permit. It's 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 right. So it would be one by one that it would be vetted. So just a couple of comments. The um, Paul, I, I understand completely what you're saying, um, but you mentioned two family that it essentially becomes a two family. Is a two family restricted to the 900 square feet on in the rest of the town? No. no. Okay. Right. So it's not really a two family. It's really its own exactly. thing. I just wanted to just confirm it's that valid. people, it's not like you're putting two families with the same amount of space or anything. It's it's a it's a hybrid, right? I just got another person who has my phone number. <laughs> so I sent me a text saying I agree with Artie. So look, it's, it's so, not, so, on, Natasha was, Natasha, can I just uh, finish really quick? Natasha. The other thing that we did already is that during the housing plan, which took a year, mm -hmm. we talked about ADUs many, you know, several times. And, and um, Jean, you're aware of that, right? I mean, we didn't talk specifics like this, but we talked about these ADUs a lot and they were public meetings and they were so even though 
we didn't have, we didn't vet this group, didn't vet it. There were different groups that came and talked to us and told us that that was something that they were interested in. So I just wanted to clarify that, that it's not like we've never spoken about it the whole, for an entire year, we were talking about it and there was a plan and we got comments back and all of that. So granted, this group didn't as much, but that group did. So no, 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 I, can, I can appreciate that. And, you know, talking about ADUs. And again, again, it was very clear that even four years ago, it was clear that that, that restriction was, was too restricting. We need to do something about it. So the conversations went more on ADUs, you know, within the housing working group, and that's appreciated. Um, you know, related to special permits, um, special permits sound like they're the safeguard to everything. They're not. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yeah, he's, I, he's I, not finished yet. No, I am. That's no, probably. Mr. Chair, I, <laughs> I appreciate it. I think we've discussed this enough. I think we should vote on which of these provisions for paragraph D should be inserted in the warrant. I would. Um, I understand <laughs> that. And we'll come to the vote in a, in a, in a minute. Appreciate the robust debate, Artie. I think you know you certainly have articulated um, a lot of the concerns that I've been hearing. I, you know, I've been receiving phone calls and I've been making phone calls and I've been having meetings with a number of our constituents. And as Paul's continuing to receive, um, uh, oh, you know what? We actually might lose our uh, building commissioner. So I want to. So yeah, didn't, didn't you have to leave it? Yeah, I need to leave it ten. So, uh, but I can stay for a few minutes. And then the other yeah. yeah. Uh, just one, yes. other, one comment, if I may. So, just may put it at ease that five foot setback. So, a few years ago, the town adopted the stretch energy code. We're now into a a, a specialized stretch energy code. These buildings have to meet that requirement. There's going to be very few standing garages right. that can be converted into an ADU and stretch code requirements. There's all kinds of issues with that. Mm -hmm. Most of these buildings, and I'd say 95% of them, <laughs> would have to be demolished and then moved to yes. a setback um, at, of the primary structure. I don't if we pass, well, hope that's not if we pass the second one. If we pass right. the first one, they can build it five feet from the Yeah, property. they can build it five feet from the property. Right, which I'm not in agreement with uh, for an ADU. But again, I'm just saying that converting a garage into an ADU is not just taking the door off and slapping an empty door and a window in the front and then converting an ADU. It's a lot more than that. So mm -hmm. um, it's going to, once you demolish it, yes. Now that's a major alteration that's going to have to be made. Right. Yeah. I, that's why I was saying at the beginning that, it's, that the building codes, you know, are a, lim a substantial limiting factor. I will, I will say a couple of things. And Natasha, if we're exceeded, you can call in on Zoom on your way. You can stay for like five more minutes. But so, I'm so maybe we should have the vote in person. I, I, I just, we should I, have the vote in person. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I, think, I, think, I think we're getting ready. Vote because I think it's a I, I understand that. Yeah, we'll, uh, we should come to that in a minute. I just everyone's had a chance, you know, has mm -hmm. had a chance to speak, and I just want to say that, you know, it's clear that that there is um, that we want to uh, we want to improve access to ADUs. A necessary part of that, if we're going to do it to the extent that of the, we want to achieve the goals that we aspire to when we passed that uh, housing plan working group, Chain, substantial changes are needed. I understand the two family argument, as I was saying, I've received a number of comments, but I've received comments from people who, who recognize that, um, you know, who recognize the, the value in being able to rent out a unit and to have it as a detached structure and I, we've all heard from people that oppose it. I think what we should do, and I wish that what we had done was created two articles, one that was specifically for attached and another was detached. And in hindsight, 2020, we should have done that. But I think that the town should, to Artie's point, the town should have that discussion as a legislative body. Oh, they will. And well, so, well, well, we're the we're so, the we're the first ones that are supposed to decide if it's been vetted. We're not supposed to pass just anything to tell me and say you vet it. We have to vet it first. What's, what's unvetted for you, Ari? What I said. What's unvetted is the fact that it's a major change to the whole town. That's one. 
it is clear that it's- but What specifically has been unvetted? The fact that detached structures creates a major zoning change within the whole town. Mr. Chair, the whole town. Okay. Yeah. I, think, yeah. I think those points have been made by okay. both you and by Artie. We like to move. And I don't need to, okay. you know. And so I think we need to vote. You know, it's not really a motion. I don't think we need one. Do you yeah. want the first paragraph D or the second paragraph D? To be inserted into the. I, I want to go to Jean because she had a she had a comment. Well, that goes to um, section F. No. Yes, yeah, so we're not there. Separate. Okay. I just didn't want to so, close everything before. Okay. Let's go back to D. Okay. So with respect to D, um, I, I would I would propose that we do the initial paragraph of D. Yeah. Then let's just vote either. Yeah, but, Exactly. Okay. Either the initial paragraph or the second paragraph. Okay. So the all, initial all in paragraph fit. is the one after the or. Is that what you mean? No, no, no. The initial the, paragraph the, is here. that it's with um that that it's um uh, applicable to a principal dwelling. So we have to read that. So we have to read that four, fourteen feet. And the second one is it can be five feet. Yes. That's what I thought. Okay. okay. And, 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 and pre-existing non-conforming. And Paul, I would agree I that, I and mean, I would agree that yes. larger larger lots make it easier to deal with this. Yeah, but we're not dealing. But we're not dealing with that. We're not. We're not dealing with that. That's not dealing with Yeah. So, all, so let's. So, all in favor of uh, of the initial paragraph. I, I, I'm confused by this phrase "initial." Okay. So the one, one the one that's yeah. that's next to D. D. Means that's that's the first. First. Yeah. 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 Okay. As compared to the word. Right. So that was which would require which would require the setback for fourteen okay. to twelve. Feet. Okay. No matter, no matter what. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All so in you, favor. Okay. Let me just That's ask you a question. So, if if somebody has a lot that doesn't, um, if they have the the garage, let's say that you have to rebuild anyway or whatever, or the partial or whatever it is, or you have to insulate more or something to that effect, they that's the five feet. No, no, this is the 12. No, no, this is the 12. No, no, the second one, the second one. The second one, one, the second one is saying, but, but, so I understand if there's a non-conforming, but if there's, if, it, if, if you build new, you can still build at the five feet? Yes. 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 Any, any new structure, 15 feet high, five feet drop in line. Could be is there a way feet. of, of saying if there's a non-conforming structure already that you can do that, but if it's a new structure? It has to be the twelve to fourteen feet. I don't know that you can. But that, five. That, but that's like a fair. But that's thing. Conform, I don't know what means and from a building point of view. Yeah, I had a problem with that yeah, because the, the, because I could see the scenario where you say, well, okay, I'm going to build a new garage, let it sit there for two and a half years or three years. Sure. Now I have a non-conforming at five feet, and I'm going to convert it to the ADU, yeah. okay. where the initial purpose altogether was okay. I need to. I need to build a new structure, uh, but but it has to be pre-existing in order for me to yeah. convert it to an ADU. So what's pre-existing from when I build it? And the whole point it, is it, it, it becomes unwielding. Yeah, the, you know, yes, it the, does. Pre-existing on the day that we pass this amendment, I, I don't think that's fair to the town. We either allow five feet or we require right. 14 feet. Exactly. Yeah. So if someone has a garage, let's say Steve Frail and Heidi Frail, and they would like to build an ADU, in that garage, could they still do it by special permit, or they wouldn't be able to? Well, they would only be able to pass. It's detached, so they would have to do it by a special. They'd have to do it twelve or fourteen feet back. They uh, still correct. need a special permit. Yes, correct. Regardless, the the, the set the it, I just want to make sure that yeah, the special permit requirement exists for, uh, for a detached structure, no matter regardless what, regardless of the setback. Right. But I think you're saying that that building right now is at five feet and they wanted to convert it to an ADU. Right. That they could not do that. Right. That's right. If we pass. Right. If you pass the, 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 the one step. next first to G. Yeah. So that, that's my issue is that they couldn't do it and that's unfair to them. That's why that's why we're going to take the vote. Okay. Yeah. Really effectively to take it to town meeting for town meeting to happen. Got it. That's, that's kind of where the special permit Plays, plays here because let's say if the, their accessory building is five feet from the lot line right. and there's nothing in the backyard of the neighbor's property. Mm -hmm. You know, in that particular case, the special permit may, may allow that because it, it, 
doesn't infringe on anybody's. You know, um, if we pass the second alternative. If you pass the second yeah. alternative. Yeah, if pass the second. But if you pass the first one, they have no chance of having an AD. Correct. Yeah. So again, the special permit allows special cases you know, to be heard in. And then if the neighbors come out against it or whatever, then so be it. But, right. Um, so now you're in favor of a five feet because they're going through a special permit process. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 never, I was never against it not being at five feet. It's just that there's a lot of implications there that, that, that yeah. happen. But yes, yeah, I mean okay. it's still the fact that if, if one if if one neighbor says yes, then the house gets sold and someone moves in, it's like it's still a, it looks like a garage. No, it's not you, a garage. Okay, but let's just have to leave. I apologize. Just this vote. Yeah. So um uh, okay, so <laughs> All in favor, let's say it this way, all in favor, I guess, of the uh, of the uh, first alternative. Which requires to move that to 14 feet. 412 feet as a result of the setback relating to the primary structure. And so a hand, a hand raised. A hand raised. All opposed or in favor? In, in favor, favor of the favor. firing that it be I think you're, you're, you're raising your hand. The, uh, the first one. Negative five feet. The first one. Um, yeah, I'll go, I'll go for that one. And then uh, all in favor of the accessory structure setback, which would be five feet. Three to two vote. Okay. okay. Uh, another change here. Yes. So, Lee, are you clear? Yes, I am. Okay. You're, Thank you all. You've been moving on to F because that was smooth. Yes. We had E. I want to make sure that uh, there's no no one has any objection to E. I'm sorry. Alrighty. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Does anyone have any A residential lot that is lawfully known and one with respect to minimum lot area and or minimum frontage may contain an accessory building used as an ADU, provided that such ADU complies with section B above. That makes sense. Okay, good. Now to F. Uh, no one else has any comments on no. mm -hmm. All right, F. Yes, Um. as, as currently worded, um, I thought that that it is ambiguous. Uh, it says uh, any, any basement in an accessory building with an ADU shall come to the maximum allowable. So that it, theoretically you could have an accessory structure with an ADU on the second floor. Um, and if it had a basement, that basement would count even if it wasn't used for an ADU. Correct. Um, I don't think we intend that. Correct. I think That's it's only correct. if the basement area is used for an ADU that they're going to count it. So I propose um, having it say in the second line, for purposes of this section, any basement area used for an ADU in an accessory building shall count toward the maximum allowable 900 square feet of living space. But, oh, and, and, I think that's a, a good clarification, but I think um, oh, oh, oh. So the, my concern about that would finished basement. Yes. I mean, yeah. Not, yeah. not a basement for yeah. utilities. Correct. Right. Yeah. So I, I think it should say sure. finished basement sure. or habitable yeah. basement. Right. Then it should be counted toward the ADU because it's it's living yeah. damage. Yes, exactly yeah. right. But it's not, then yeah. exactly. Yeah, I agree. So I and then Lee also this says any basement in the accessory building, but if you I'm not sure how many accessory buildings would have a basement. Isn't it the problem? Right. This is this is any basement in an accessory building with an ADU. So you've got the garage. Okay, you're adding on to the garage, the second floor, onto 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 the garage. And now the question is, on the first floor, you're going to keep it as a garage. You're going to keep it just as storage. Doesn't count towards the 900 square feet. But if you're going to finish it so that it's habitable. But so then it should count towards the right. So that's, the first floor is not a basement. Correct. Correct. I think what we were talking about is that the building gets knocked down and they put a foundation in for an ADU. Okay. And then it's a one story ADU above it with a foundation down below. That, that if that, that basement in that case was finished, yeah. then it would count towards the okay. ADU. Right. So if, if not, not they get additional space. Yeah, if it's not, and it's just used for utilities, you have a lot of heat, your furnace. You know, so how about if we make it purpose of this section any furnished, comma, habitable basement? Any finished or finished, comma, habitable 
basement in an accessory building with an ADU so far. I don't know if we need habitable. Yeah, do we need habitable? Just finished. Just, just yeah. finished. Just finished. Just finished. Just finished. Just finished. Yeah, just finished. Yeah. This is a basement that has no windows. That's not habitable. Well, and it's finished. But it's livable. Right. I mean, right. so habitable yeah. and finished. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I like the way you have it finished. Habit. So, so, all right. So, you are intending to go farther than I thought you were. Um, and Paul, I think, has got the words correct to address your issues. Um, so, I take back my more limiting language. Um, and, and so we're talking about, for purposes of this section, any finished habitable basement in an accessory building with an ADU. Yeah, we'll count to we'll count to okay. Yes. I'm good with that change. Okay. okay. I so I just, so. I just want to be clear. So if someone has a basement now, and let's say the house is 1,000 square feet on the first floor, 1,000 square feet on the second floor, there is 1,000 square feet in the in the basement, and the and the there's an attic that's unfinished. Now they're going to. Now this they're is only oh, an accessory I, building. I, I, know. I know that, but I'm, oh, my okay. question specifically is with respect to the primary, shall we equally count the finished habitable ADU 900 square footage? Because right now the town did not count as part of the floor area ratio a finished basement or a finished third floor. I don't, I don't think we need to change it. I don't think we need to go there. Now we're getting way too complicated, too many changes. We have the primary residence. I don't think we should be making any changes to the language we have. If you're putting an ADU on a primary residence, I'm fine with the, what we've got. Yeah. And you don't know how the, the only dispute we have is the price building. Use it anyway. You know, yeah, because you're going to have a finished basement. You know, you, you, you have a finished basement for the whole for the whole house, for the whole family. It's got nothing to do with the ADU. No, that's where the ADU is. The ADU can be on the second floor. The ADU can be in the attic. You have a finished yeah. basement in the, in the house. You already have a finished basement in in the house. You're creating a, a 900 as square well, foot yeah. ADU in the in, in the attic or on the second right. floor. What difference does it make that the basement yeah. is finished? This is the treatment yeah. of the floor yeah. aeration. But okay, yeah. I yeah. wanted to raise it. Yeah. I've raised it. It's clear the will of the board. So we'll move forward with mm -hmm. all language between finish and habitable. Are you it's not no, no. I, I think it's I think we really need to move on. Yeah. So I think I, I agree with the changes that Jean yeah, that's proposed. Right. That's what I yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That Jean proposed or that Paul uh, proposed? Yeah. The Paul proposed. Good. Okay. Sorry. Okay. okay. So Lee, you have that change? Finished habitable. I'm going to that's insert right. what was before the third <laughs> basement, and that's all. Yes, I have it. All right. Okay, so chair, I oh, will, and, I, and I'm going to separate this. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to include the recommendation in okay. my initial motion. Okay. I move that we send Article Two with the changes that, as drafted and with the changes that we made today to the Warren Committee for inclusion in the May Town Meeting, the annual Town Meeting Warren. We have a motion by Paul. Do we have a second? Second. A second by Natasha. Any discussion? Well, we're talking about sending the article as written with the changes. Yes, yeah, just sending it so that, that that's how it will appear in the world. I okay. okay. I, I vote no. Okay. okay. So all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? No. So for the record, we have a 4-1 on sending the uh, ADU bylaw as revised today. Okay, Lee, do we absolutely need to vote today whether to recommend or can we wait until later before town meeting? You know, town meeting's not for another month and a half. Yes, you, you, you can it's wait. Make our recommendation Good. so that we can think about that some more. Good. On our vote for recommendation. And I see things from the finance committee and from the select board recommendation to be made at town meeting all to the that, time. To that point, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to that point, Lee, I had an opportunity to speak with uh, the chair of FinCom, and it would be helpful that we are able to provide, either by you or by Karen, some estimation of what we would anticipate for the construction of new ADUs as a result of the bylaw change. That's okay, one of well, the impacts. I mean, over the, over the course of the, I think, the last three years since it's been adopted, we've had 12 
units. Uh, so okay. yeah. I leave. leave. I understand. Okay, thank you. So thank you very much, Natasha. Thank you. I'm just, Sorry. We'll talk okay. offline about that, but we right. it, in our interest to do that now. And we've lost the person voting on whether to make a recommendation or not. I, can, so I, can. I still would like to defer making a recommendation. Well, does anyone else would anyone like to make a recommend uh, a, a motion to recommend our position on the article? I um, I, I move that we uh, recommend to town meeting uh, the adoption of all four articles that are before us. We, we, well, we can't. The other we can't. Yeah, we can't vote it that way. Yes. 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 Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, again, I vote that we. Uh, I, I move that we vote uh, to recommend to town meeting the adoption of Article Two uh, with the changes that we made uh, at this meeting. We have a motion by Jean. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Natasha. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, I'll come to the vote. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. please signify by saying nay. Nay. I abstain because um, okay. because I am torn about including attached dwellings, and so I'm not going to vote no, but I'm not going to vote yes. So for the record, we have uh, three in favor, one opposed, and one abstention, and the abstention is noted, uh, as Paul just uh, mentioned. Thank you all very much on that item. We're not done yet, but Natasha. Okay. Um, uh, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Give me your purse. I won't. Uh -huh. I can't get in the car. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so you. next up on our agenda. Um, oh, just a quick. There was one piece of correspondence that came in before the hearing closed last Tuesday. Yeah. So you should read that into the record before. Um, before so <laughs> so I yes. I'm just trying to find. Um, I made a note of the correspondence that we had. Uh, and we all had another. There was, yes, there was, I think there was three. There were a couple others that came is. in and oh. they're under general correspondence because they, they came in after the hearing was closed, but there's still correspondence. So I couldn't identify in our packet today which was which. Um, so, it depends on when they came in. So the first one that came in was during the hearing. Do you want me to tell you what they were? Yes. Um, sure. Um, the one that was during the hearing uh, when it was still ongoing was came in on March 7th at 1017, and that was from Stephen Frail. Mm -hmm. The two others that are general correspondence, um, but related to this, are Katie Dirk yes. and Teresa Combs. Thank you very much. So I, uh, thank you very much. So that's the correspondence. Is there any other report, Lee, that you have, or Alex? Uh, no, I have nothing to add. Okay. Uh, Artie, do you have anything to report? No. no. Uh, Paul, do you have anything to report? Uh, Jean? No. Okay. Uh, just, just real quick, I will be contacting you later today, um, hopefully, to try to schedule an executive session meeting. Yes. We're hoping to get our calendars out right now, but we haven't heard from Jay about who to go those. So um, just look for that email from me, and we'll try to schedule this. Um, excuse me. Um, I see the, the note I made to myself. It has to do with um, um, the explanation of the article, not with the article itself. So I'll provide that to, uh, and, to the... And it has to do, let me just tell you, it, it says nothing about the about building uh, commissioner uh, having the option of referring uh, the que a question oh, okay. about you to the design review board. There's nothing about that. And I, I thought we should I'll, add. I'll add it. I'll add it. Yeah. Thank you, Jean. Um, I think with that, so yeah, so we, and that may be next week for the executive if session. If we can swing it yeah. with the notice requirements and whatnot. Right. And uh, that probably would be better time now. Or... Zoom. No, I'll email you all. I had hoped to, but um, it doesn't make sense unless I get into it. Understood. So, uh, so, so, so I assume that. The bill has not passed yet to extend. Um, no, the the bill. Um, I think the bill passed the House. The bill passed the Senate, um, but the bill in which um, this these extensions are embedded is currently in committee, um, and so it's hoped that it's going to uh, make it through the process and have a governor's signature 
um, before the um, law expires at the end of the month. But there is always that possibility that um, you know it won't happen for maybe you know a week late. So um, that's where we are. Being with attorney telling me before the end of the month. Right. Yes. Uh, which is what I was going to propose, propose that we do that one by Zoom. All right. Uh, anything else? No. no okay. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn, please? So move. Second. A motion. Uh, to, uh, a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll come to the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Signify by saying aye. Aye, aye. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. All opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you very much.